Hi everyone, I'm Trish and welcome to my women's online Bible study. Today we are covering Leviticus chapters 9 through 11. So let's say a short prayer and dive right in. Heavenly Father, please give me clarity to speak and the hearer the ear to hear. Please impart on us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of all your ways that we may walk upright before you. Help us to share your word with others in clarity and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Always oh, kind of gets me focused. So grab your Bibles and turn with me to Leviticus 9. I am reading from the New King James Version. Uh, it came to pass on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said to Aaron, take for yourself a young bull as a sin offering and a ram as a burnt offering without blemish and offer them before the Lord. And to the children of Israel, you shall speak saying, take a kid of the goats as a sin offering and a calf and a lamb, both of the first year without blemish as a burnt offering, also a bull and a ram as a peace offering to sacrifice before the Lord and a grain offering mixed with oil. For today, the Lord will appear to you. So they brought what Moses commanded before the tabernacle of meeting and all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. Then Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded you to do and the glory of the Lord will appear to you. And Moses said to Aaron, go to the altar, offer your sin offering and your burnt offering and make atonement for yourself and for the people. Offer the offering to the people and make atonement for them as the Lord commanded. Aaron therefore went to the altar and killed the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. Then the sons of Aaron brought the blood to him and he dipped his finger in the blood, put it on the horns of the altar and poured the blood at the base of the altar. But the fat, the kidneys and the fatty load from the liver of the sin offering he burned on the altar as the Lord had commanded Moses. The flesh and the hide he burned with fire outside the camp and he killed the burnt offering and Aaron's sons presented to him the blood, which he sprinkled all around on the altar. Then they presented the burnt offering to him with its pieces uh, and head and he burned them on the altar. And he washed the entrails and the legs and burned them with the burnt offering on the altar. Then he brought the people's offering and took the goat, which was the sin offering for the people and killed it and offered it for sin, like the first one. And he brought the burnt offering and offered it according to the prescribed manner. Then he brought the grain offering, took a handful of it, and burned it on the altar, besides the burnt sacrifice to the, of the morning. He also killed the bull and the ram as sacrifices of peace offering, which were of for the people. And Aaron's sons presented to him the blood, which he sprinkled all around on the altar, and the fat from the bull and the ram. The fatty tail, which cover, what covers the entrails and the kidneys and the fatty lobe attached to the liver and put, and they put the fat on the beast, sorry, on the breast. Then the, no, then he burned the fat on the altar, but the breast and the right thigh Aaron waved as a wave offering before the Lord as Moses had commanded. Then Aaron lifted his hand toward the people, blessed them, and came down from offering the sin offering, the burnt offering, and peace offerings. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of meeting and came out and blessed the people. Then the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people, and fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. When all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. Leviticus 10. Then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke, saying, by those whom come near me, I must be regarded as holy, and before all the people, I must be glorified. So Aaron held his peace. Then Moses called uh, Mishael and Elzaphon, the sons of Uz Uziel, sorry, Uziel, the, the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. So that they went near and carried uh, them by their tunics out of the camp, as Moses had said. And Moses said to Aaron and to Eleazar and Ithamar, his sons, 
Do not uncover your heads, nor tear your clothes, lest you die. And wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, be well the burning which the Lord has kindled. You shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of meeting, lest you die. For the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moses. Then the Lord spoke to Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine or intoxicating drink, you nor your sons with you. When you go into the tabernacle of meeting, lest you die, it shall be a statue forever throughout your generations, that you may distinguish between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean, and that you may teach the children of Israel all the statues with the, which the Lord has spoken to them by the hand of Moses. And Moses spoke to Aaron and to Eleazar and Ithamar, his sons, who were left. Take the grain offering that remains of the offerings made by fire to the Lord and eat it without living besides the altar. For it is most holy. You shall eat it in a holy place because it is your due and your son's due of the sacrifices made by fire to the Lord. For so I have been commanded. The breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the heave offering you shall eat in a clean place. You, your sons and your daughters with you. For they are your due and your sons due. Which are given from the sacrifices of peace offerings of the children of Israel. The thigh of the heave offering and the breast of the Wave offering they shall bring with the offering of fat made by fire to offer as a wave offering before the Lord. And it shall be your sons and your daughters. I'm sorry. And it shall be yours and your sons with you by a statue forever as the Lord has commanded. Then Moses made careful inquiry about the goat of the sin offering. And there it was burned up. And he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, who were left, saying, why have you not eaten the sin offering in the holy in a holy place, since it is most holy, and God has given it to you to bear, given it to you to bear the guilt of the congregation to make atonement for them before the Lord? See, its blood was not brought inside the holy place. Indeed, you should have eaten it in a holy place as I commanded. And Mo and Aaron said to Moses, Look, this day they have offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord, and such things have befallen me. If I had eaten the sin offering today, would it have been accepted in the sight of the Lord? So when Moses heard that, he was content. Leviticus 11. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying to them, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, These are the animals which you may eat among all the animals that are on the earth. Among the animals, whatever divides the hoof, having cloven hooves and chewing the cud, that you may eat. Nevertheless, you shall not eat among those the, that chew the cud or those that have cloven hooves, the camel, because it chews the cud but does not have cloven hooves, it is unclean to you. The rocks hyric, because it chews the cud but does not have cloven hooves, it is unclean to you. The hare, because it chews the cud but does not have cloven hooves, is unclean to you. And the swine, though it divides the hoof, Hanging, hanging cloven hooves, yet does not chew the cud, is unclean to you. Their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcasses you shall not touch. They are unclean to you. Uh, these you may eat of all that are in the water. Whatever in the water has fins and scales, whether in the seas or in the rivers that you may eat. But all in the seas or in the rivers that do not have fins and scales, all that move in the water or any living thing which is in the water, they are an abomination to you. They shall be an, ab they shall be an abomination to you. Uh, you shall not eat their flesh, but you shall regard their carcasses as an abomination. Whatever in the water does not have fins or scales, that shall be an, uh, an abomination to you. And these you shall regard as an abomination among the birds. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle, the vulture, the buzzard, the kite, and the falcon after its kind. Every raven after its kind. The ostrich, the short-eared owl, the seagull, and the hawk after its kind. The little owl, the fisher owl, and the, screecher, and the screech owl. The white owl, the jackdaw, and the carrion vulture. The stork, the heron, after its kind, the hoopo, hoopoo, and the bat. All flying insect, insect, insects that creep on all fours shall be an abomination to you. Yet these you may eat of every flying in insect that creeps on all fours. Those which have jointed legs above their feet with which to leap on the earth. These you may eat. 
the locust after its kind, the destroying locust after its kind, the cricket after its kind, and the grasshopper after its kind. But all other flying insects which have four feet shall be an abomination to you. By these you shall become unclean. Whoever touches the carcass of any of them shall be unclean until evening. Whoever carries part of the carcass of any of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. The carcass of any animal which divides the foot but is not cloven, hooved, or does not chew the, chew the cud is unclean to you. Everyone who touches it shall be unclean. And whatever goes on its paws among all kinds of animals that go on all fours, uh, those are unclean to you. Whoever touches any such carcass shall be unclean until evening. Whoever carries any such carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. It is unclean to you. These also shall be unclean to you among the creeping things that creep on the earth, the mole, the 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 mole, the mouse, and the large lizard after its kind, the gecko, the monitor lizard, the sand reptile, the sand lizard, and the carmelian. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Whoever touches them when they are dead shall be unclean until evening. Anything on which any of them falls when they are dead shall be unclean. Whether, whether it is any item of wood or clothing or skin or sack, Whatever item it is in which any work is done, it must be put in water, and it shall be unclean until evening. Then it shall be clean. Any earthen vessel into which any of them falls, you shall break, and whatever it is, and whatever is in it shall be unclean. In such a vessel, in such a vessel, any edible food upon which water falls becomes unclean, and any drink that may be drunk from it becomes unclean. And everything on which a part of any such carcass falls shall be unclean. Whether it is an oven or cooking stove, it shall be broken down, for they are unclean and shall be unclean to you. Nevertheless, a spring or a cistern in which there is plenty of water shall be clean. But whatever touches any such carcass becomes unclean. And in a part of any such carcass, sorry. And if a part of any such carcass falls on any planting seed, which is to be sown, it remains clean. But if water is put on the seed, and if a part of any such carcass falls on it, it becomes unclean to you. And if any animal which you may eat dies, he who touches its carcass shall be unclean until evening. He who eats of its carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. He also who carries its carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. And every creeping thing that creeps on the earth shall be an abomination. It shall not be eaten. Eaten, Whatever crawls on its belly, whatever goes on all fours, or whatever has many feet among all creeping things that creep on the earth, these you shall not eat, for they are an abomination. You shall not make yourselves uh, abominable with any creeping thing that creeps, nor shall you make yourselves unclean with them. Least you be defiled by them. For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore consecrate yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any creeping things that creeps on the earth, for I am the Lord who brings you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Who shall therefore be holy, for I you shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. This is the law of the animals and the birds and every living creature that moves in the waters and on every creature that creeps on the earth to distinguish between the unclean and the clean and between the animal that may be eaten and the animal that not, that may not be eaten. Lord God, bless the reading of your word and let it fill us up until we are able to eat of it again. If you are just here for scripture read through, thank you for coming to read through scripture with me. I really appreciate it and I hope to see you again next time. If you're here for more in-depth Bible study, stick around and we will dive right in. So uh, Leviticus 9 begins uh, with it came to pass on the eighth day. So it has taken eight, day, eight days uh, for Aaron and his sons to be consecrated. So at the end of those eight days... They offer up the sacrifices to the Lord. And I want to drop down to verse 22 and just slow down a bit. Uh, so.
So it says in 9 and 22, then Aaron lifted his hands toward the people. So Aaron is uh, the priest and he's standing there. Uh, so I know you might see this uh, as a form of a blessing or prayer in church or some people holding hands up to worship. Um, and I just want to slow down and show that that is what Aaron is doing here. <laughs> so we're moving on to um, chapter 10. Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, I'm going to go slow through 10 because I just think that this is super important because this is a, they, they were just consecrated into um, priesthood and they are about to die <laughs> right away. Um, when the Lord gives instructions, he is holy um, and he must be regarded as holy. And I just want to slow down and kind of go, let, uh, let's take this, uh, exposit this text here, verse by verse. So Tim, then Nadab and Abihu, his son, uh, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it and put uh, incense on it and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So the Lord didn't command them to do this. This is something that they just did. I don't know if they were they were uh, not paying attention during training, <laughs> but this is not a regular on the job training. This is the Lord. This is the creator of all things, and he must be regarded as holy in, in um uh, there's another example in the New Testament when they were just building the church about uh, people withholding back offerings. And I, I don't want to jump ahead into that, but uh, 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 you have to make an example, I guess, sometimes so that people will know the seriousness of it. The Lord is not playing around. So, uh, two, <laughs> verse two, ten and two. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, so immediately after the fire comes down, the virus is two sons. Moses turns to his brother and quickly says, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. And before all the people, I must be glorified. So after Moses says this to him, this seems to calm Aaron to, to where the, at the point that he holds his peace. But, but let's read on because it's astounding what happens here. Then Moses called uh, Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of uh, Uzziel, the son, the uncle of Aaron, and said to to them, "Come near, carry your brethren from before the uh, b before the sanctuary out of the camp." So Moses calls um, uh, Aaron's uncle and a couple other guys to come and take out the bodies of his sons. Um, and Moses and Aaron have to remain in here. Let's let's find out why. And say, okay, so. Uh, uh, so they come in, they take the body out. And uh, six, and Moses said to Aaron and to Eliezer and Ithamar, his son. So these are El Eliezer and Ithamar are Aaron's other two sons who uh, didn't have anything to do with Nadab and Bayhu. So they didn't die. So he says to them, do not uncover your heads nor tear your clothes, lest you die. So Moses is like, don't tear your clothes. Don't uncover your head for the death of your brother and your son or you are going to die too. And they are in here, in in the holy place of God, trying to keep it together. <laughs> and so, and wrath came upon all the people. Uh, so the people are, are are super upset about what's happening. Uh, but let your, uh, do not cover your heads or tear your clothes that you die. And wrath came upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, be well the burning which the Lord has kindled. So the people can mourn. But the people who it mattered the most to, has to, they have to hold their peace while they are in the presence of the Lord. I don't know if I could have been able to do it, but they do. This is why, you know, the Lord knows who to pick for what job. Boy, I'm telling you. Okay, so uh, then 7, verse 7, 10 and 7, you shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of meeting lest you die. So they can't leave for the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you. They have been anointed to offer these sacrifices and, and they have to be in there with that anointing oil. <laughs> or they will die. So they did according to the word of Moses. And I'm not saying this as if the Lord isn't uh, merciful. He is. He warned them. He told them. In pre we covered this already, guys. That he told them in previous chapters just like he told us not Adam and Eve in the garden not to eat that fruit or we're going to die like when the Lord says I want you to do something and then the next words are least you die 
if you have to back up and say, wait, say that again, <laughs> it is super important that you follow those instructions because the Lord is a God of his word. So let's move on. Verse eight. Oh, wait, wait, wait. At the end of that, they said that, that at the end of uh, seven, it says, and they did according to the word of Moses. Then eight, then the Lord spoke to Aaron saying, the Lord just talks to him here. Do not drink wine or intoxicate and drink. He continues on to tell them his plan for the people. I don't want you to drink wine or intoxicate and drink. You know your son's with you when you go into the tabernacle of meeting. He's steady instructing them. At least you die. So here's another warning. Don't come in here drinking. Are you going to die? Uh, it shall be a, I, I can guarantee they hear this loud and clear at this point in time. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations uh, that you may distinguish between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean. So God is telling them what's holy and unholy and clean and unclean. And that you may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken to them by the hand of Moses. Now, when you have a story like this to tell someone, you are saying, hey, don't go in there like this. I am telling you the truth. I lost my two sons because they didn't listen and they died. Do not go in here. They they have a reference point to come back to. And it's immediate. It's literally, uh, this is these are the priestly guys who I want to lead um the head and be the head of my church. I wanted to be Aaron and his sons um from the Levitical priesthood, and then two of them die. And then there's only two left here. All right, moving on. Uh it shall be a statue that you may distinguish between holy, okay, and that you may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken to them by the hand of Moses. Moving on to 12, and Moses spoke to Aaron and to Eleazar and Ithamar, his sons who were left. So he's talking to all three of them. Take the grain offering that remains in the offerings made by fire uh, to the Lord. And so they're supposed to eat the grain offering here. And so uh, I'm not going to read all all of the uh what they're supposed to do with the offering i'm i'm going to skip that uh, and jump down to 16. then moses made careful inquiry about the goat of the sin offering and there it was burned up and so moses at this point it, he was angry with eliezer ithamar and ithamar the sons of aaron who were left saying why have you not eaten the sin offering? because they're supposed to eat the sin offering in the holy place since it is the most holy and God has given it to you to bear the guilt of the congregation. So they had to eat it in order before they burn it to bear the guilt of the congregation and to make atonement for them uh, before the Lord. See, its blood was not brought inside the holy place. Indeed, you should have eaten it in the holy place as I commanded. But listen to what Aaron responds. And Aaron said to Moses, I'm down in, in, in 19 here. Look, this day they have offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord and such things have befallen me. So he's speaking about his two sons passing away. He is heated on the inside. Had he eaten it, had he eaten of that offering of the sin offering of the people while he's sitting on the inside, he is super, he's keeping it together, but he's hurt about his sons. So he's saying, um, if I had eaten a sin offering today, would it have been accepted in the sight of the Lord? So when Moses heard it, heard that he was content because he knew that it wasn't in their heart to be, uh, to rebel against the Lord. He, he, um, he knew that they weren't trying to rebel against the Lord, but they, that, that they were just actually hurting. He was like, I just went through this just a moment ago. And so I just want to slop and slow down during that, um, that portion because uh it's, it's just super important to follow uh, uh the strict instructions of the lord he is not playing when he puts something forth in scripture now though we don't have to you know worry about unclean and clean because uh chapter 11 just literally just goes on to list uh things that we can and can't eat uh sorry not we the children of Israel weren't allowed to eat as the Lord deemed them clean and unclean. But we know that in the New Testament, once you bless your food, you are allowed to eat um, of it. You don't have to hold to the dietary laws of uh, the Old Testament. Let's see. Uh, I, I wanted to slow down uh, in, a, um, in chapter 11. The, um, drop down to chapter 44. Uh, 
for it says for i am for i am the lord your god you shall therefore consecrate yourselves and you you shall be holy for i am holy so the lord is holy and he wants them to be holy he repeats it at the end of uh, 45b he says uh you shall therefore be holy for i am holy he's telling them he wants them to be holy because he is holy he wants uh them to uh mimic who he is as as the lord and uh so that's pretty much it so um we will pick up in chapter 12 next time i just wanted to slow down and go through uh 10 a little bit and um that they just go on in 11 with uh unclean uh, they're naming what animals that to eat and not eat not not that these uh this wouldn't be a uh uh a good diet to go on eating these things which are clean and unclean uh but as long as you are blessing you are allowed to eat bacon and <laughs> <laughs> uh, pork um that comes from the pig okay so that's it thank you for coming to read through and study scripture with me i really appreciate it and i hope it's a means of blessing to you may the lord bless you and keep you may he make his face to shine upon you and bring you peace both now and forevermore bye